All right. Happy Sunday. Happy Mother's Day. Why are you laughing? I just trying to take, take, kind of check the boundaries of how much I can move. <laughs> no, you cannot miss. I want to stay hidden during all my channelings. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we are here, as you can hear, live with my wife, Anya, today to help us facilitate and hold a safe space. Uh, we also have a heavily moderated chat today because we got a little bit of weird stuff going on in chat sometimes and I want to keep the safe space and uh, um, wonderful vibration for you. So we got that going on. No warnings, just a band. So please be good. Um, what else is going on? I wanted to tell you in case you don't know, there are some people new to my channel who don't know what I do. I've been a channel, both trance and conscious since age five. Some of my work is channeling, um, but on these series, this is called Humans from the Future. We have another one called Humans from the Past, where we use a unique remote viewing technique. It is unique to me, um, and it does involve channeling. It involves by location. I am literally there experiencing, feeling, tasting, sensing everything um, in bilocated form. And I didn't know how to do that until age 40. So that's um, a unique gift for me that I've been doing for um, I don't want to give my age, but yeah, I just turned 48, eight years now. <laughs> Finally decided to share it with the public here recently this year. And uh, I think the end of last year was when we started um, sharing the remote viewing, this unique style of remote viewing. It's not like um, some of the stuff you hear in Gateway Project. It's not like the things you hear where you just center and train your mind. This is not about your mind. This is about literal bilocation and going past the time-space continuum to tap into the current timeline, which we're all on. So what that means is anyone who happens to find my channel will be in that timeline, and I will give you whatever timeline we're on. And this means we can grow and shift together. And when things shift, we know that together. <clears throat> that's how that happens with timelines. Um, because people in America are, are very interesting when it comes to lawsuits, I have to give you a disclaimer. Um, this is for entertainment purposes only. Um, I have been getting great yield out of these type of readings, which is why I'm sharing it with you. Um, I've been able to really change some things in my life and my children's life. And I hope the same for our children and our grandchildren, but I'm not a financial advisor. I'm not an attorney. I'm not a doctor. So if any of those things ever come up for this channeling or for my remote viewings in the future, please know that it is for entertainment purposes only and to please um, get help from your medical professionals, financial professionals, legal professionals, et cetera. Um, if you have any questions about investments, your body, your mind, your, your everything about your soul, you can ask me about your soul. We're good with soul and spirit. <laughs> All right. There it is. Um, currently we have this type of ask your future self readings and we have them for patrons only right now, but we will be going public at some point here soon. So be patient with us if you're not a patron, um, but it's at discounts for patrons right now, if you're interested and we've linked that to the Patreon link to become a member and to get your discount for your future self reading, um, at the top of the chat. And if you don't want to become a patron, wait a little bit longer if you feel like it, and you'll be able to get them um, at regular prices. But they're on introductory prices, very affordable right now. And they'll stay for a while for the patrons. Right. Yeah. Good yeah. Luck. Yeah. And we will keep that that long uh, rate for the patrons for you um, as a thanks for all of your support to this channel and for our Patreon channel and for all my channels. You will be able to get that discount for quite a lengthy amount of time when you're a patron. All right. Okay. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. I'm really enjoying the future self readings and we've been able to kind of get a deeper insight into how our path is, where our alignment, where our resonance is um, and what we need to change to grow into a better future. So that's why we're doing this one today as well. And now we'll do a brief sound check, get the technology out of the way. First five minutes are always announcements and technological fun. I was late today because my kitchen sprang a leak and there was water everywhere. And I was like, why? We just fixed this. So we turned off the water and cleaned up the mess really quickly and ran in here to be on time, but we're still just a little behind. Happy Mother's Day to all my friends and family, YouTube and elsewhere who are listening. Uh, happy Mother's Day to my mom. I've already told her, but I'll tell her again in case she comes across this. And to my wife's mom and mother-in-law and to my sister-in-law and to all of my beautiful friends and family around the world. Thank you so much for mothering. Mothering is one of the most beautiful gifts that you can offer to this planet. 
and um, mothering a child in today's society is not an easy feat. So I want to give a good thanks to all the mothers out there and for all of your hard work with these incredible children that we have. Um, can you hear Anya? Can you hear me? Say it again. Okay. Mm -hmm. Can you hear me? So happy Mother's Day to everybody from me as well. I hope you're all chilling out, not doing anything and just being treated like queens. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, today we are, I just met this future human. So we are working in year 2085. All right. You're 2085. That's quite a ways away. Yeah. I'm like, huh, that's a long way. Am I still, are we still going to be here in this that time? I don't Not know. me anyway. I'll be gone. I might still be. I might still be hanging on. What about you guys? You think you'll be here in 2085 to watch your children and grandchildren and Great grandchildren, probably by then, who knows? I think many of us will be. So, um, I'm loud. Am I loud? I can turn it down. I so, say it might be me, is it? Am I too loud? Well, I did turn up the microphone because I didn't know if you were going to be able to hear Anya. Am, am I too loud because I'm closer to the microphone than her? And she, she, she normally tells to... me I'm too quiet, and now I'm too loud. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say it's all good. Okay. You just can't win, guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So this is what makes this type of remote viewing very unique to me and interesting is that I have a technique for that by location that goes through the time space continuum and latches onto the unique time construct that we're all in currently right now. So for those of you saying that's not my timeline, you might want to listen to the beings that come through and take some advice. If you don't like the timeline, they will tell you how to change it for yourself. They will tell you if it's changed individually, because we all have free will and individual choices that we can make to, um, if we can't change a collective timeline, we can at least know what we can do to handle it better. Um, and sometimes if we work together, we can change a collective timeline, but you can most certainly always change an individual timeline. So I never do these types of remote viewings in order to disempower you or make you think you're stuck in that. But to help you understand, this is the alignment. Now you need to ask the proper questions to your soul, to the beings around you in your life, both in spirit and in the physical, um, and decide what you want to do to change and talk to the beings we channel and ask them what they can do to change it, right? So we have some questions. We're going to be talking to Clint. Um, he is a Wall Street financial advisor and a Washington press member. So super big fancy guy. Um, he is a Buddhist as well, which is really rare to have like a Buddhist in the White House. So I was kind of like, oh, well, these are interesting times. Let's, I really want to get to know you. I was remote viewing the White House and trying not to get caught. That's how I met him. My wife wasn't supposed to know that because she doesn't like me to do dangerous things. So surprise. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just here to make sure she's safe and all of us are safe. All the kids are safe and all that kind of stuff. So you guys understand where I'm coming from. I know you do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So surprise, I was doing dangerous things and almost got caught, but now I'm good. <laughs> um, now Clint and I are no longer meeting at the White House, but he's a Buddhist who does understand meditation and spiritual mystical experiences. So he thinks this is kind of a mystical experience. He doesn't quite know what to make of it, um, but he likes it. And he's awake enough to understand it and accept it. And we're enjoying getting to know each other. We've only been talking for what, four days? It's not really been that long. That's what happens, guys. She goes out at night to talk to Clint. <laughs> <laughs> it's not like that. It's a, married. <laughs> and he's married. Yeah, it's, only, it's only about, <laughs> what, four or five minutes? You're <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think four and a half, maybe five days that we've known each other. So um, we're getting to know each other and we're just kind of getting each, each other's kind of, you know, I have a lot of Buddhist principles in my belief systems and he does too. Um, and he's incredible. He lives in the summer in Southern California and he lives out in Washington to do his press work. But when he's not doing that, uh, which is not often, he, uh, he takes some breaks and goes out to California and does all of his uh, winter time there in California. All right. So I'm going to get into the remote viewing now, go into a remote viewing trance, go into the time space continuum, distort it a little, bilocate into the time zone and try to find him for where he promised he would be. 
um, and we'll see if we can catch hold of him and answer some of the patrons' questions. And if we get through them, and if Anya happens to see something that really aligns, she might grab it from the chat as well for questions. But we do already have 85 questions from Patreon members today, so I cannot promise you that it'll be YouTube questions that we go to, but she's going to be looking at both just in case. All right. Time space continuum, enter time warp 2085. Zone in Virginia, 2085. Zone in Virginia, 2085. Zone in 180 degrees south. Zone in 35 degrees northeast. Zone in. Zone in. say he was going to be a freaking yoga class. Okay. <sighs> so flighty sometimes to do all the things you do. He sees me. I'm going to have to interrupt yoga class. I'm used to the Wall Street get up, Clint. What's up with that? Now I get to see what looks like biker's pants and a tie-dyed t-shirt. He said, don't knock it till you try it. <laughs> he says, I give a hearty hello to all of you today. Welcome to my weird life. All right. I'm going to take a walk to a nearby coffee shop and because he always needs coffee after yoga, Mr. Fancy Pants, um, and then he will answer your questions. No, he says, go ahead and start on your questions, Anya. Okay, thank you. Hi, Clint. This is Anya. Um, the first question I have is from Teresa. She says, how has so-called capitalism changed? <clears throat> she says, not the physical structure of banking and currency per se, but our collective beliefs around distribution, abundance, and manifestation. You had your lar largest economic collapse in 2029, and it lasted all the way until mid-2030. So that would be a period of time similar to the Great Depression. And it created a lot of gratitude. Prior to then, there was a lot of fear. But the economic collapse, particularly in the United States and Canada and portions of the UK, Ireland and Western Europe, all suffered from this. Many other places in the world did not. 
what we learned is that we can't depend upon anyone else to secure our finances except ourselves. We have to do our own research for investing and we have to understand that markets can be volatile. They are starting in this volatility now and that doesn't end in any of the systems which we probably will talk about today um, until mid 2030. You're gonna have some interesting times. So invest wisely. We can talk about that again if you like. Um, I made Pamela write down a ton of stuff and she likely can't access it now from this remote viewing experience, but perhaps after the channeling, if you ask her nicely, she will share with you all of the investment tips that I wrote down, particularly uh, for stocks and mutual funds um, and everything else you can ask me about regarding stability and cryptocurrency and feasibility. Um, liquidity and all of that she will talk about later. She will talk about taxable and non-taxable funds. We will talk about all those things that perhaps some of your financial advisors are a little bit leery about right now, but perhaps they shouldn't be. Um, in terms of capitalist mindset, because we had a major crash in capitalism um, that lasted Mm, like I said, beginning of 2029 all the way until 2030 in your time frame, that that was an extreme end to capitalism. We, we had more things to focus on, just like natural disasters and the safety of our homes and loved ones. And we weren't quite as interested in, in determining what was going to happen next uh, on Wall Street, you know. So that changed the mindset. Many people from that time frame began to learn how to invest wisely. They began to stop worrying about things that hadn't happened yet and just focus mostly, you began to focus mostly on how if you invest, you can also give back. How if you've been giving back a lot, you can also invest for yourself. How money can be more along the lines of equanimity. Um, there were a lot investments changed from that point on and there was no longer a capitalist mindset and there hasn't been so much of a capitalist mindset, particularly in the UK the and the US. Um, I'd say by 2040 was the beginning of the shift out of the full capitalist mindset and into more balance and equanimity for all. From that time point on, the evolution of the mindset became more generous, more balanced, um, more peaceful. Uh, people weren't as afraid of survival mode after 2045. In particular, you weren't uh, in the mindset of work until you die and then make sure you leave money for the kids and everything is about your work, your status, your class. That completely began to shift after 2032 and shifted fully by 2045. Thank you, Clint. Um, Emily has a question. Uh, is there a financial collapse or restructuring for the US between 2023 and 2030? And if so, she says, is there anything that you can recommend that people can, how people can prepare for it or even prevent it from happening? Your harder times were between 2019 and the beginning of 2023. But now, hear me closely you are entering a very good time for unique traditional investments and just a few cryptos, not everything. They're still quite volatile and will be for some time, but there is some growth in one not so well-known crypto. Um, we can talk about that. I, I believe you guys know it as uh, Cardano. It's a different name now, but that and two others are the only ones that are around and you need to know this throughout the years that only three cryptocurrencies made the cut. So Cardano was one, Bitcoin was another. Um, actually, XRP is still hanging in a little bit, but it's very volatile. Ethereum um, was the third. And in that order is how that panned out throughout the time. Granted, don't take my full advice by saying, okay, it's not going to shift and change. And when you feel drops coming, be aware of that as well. Um, but these are the things that hang in there and the rest of them just completely fall off of the face of the planet. They're basically worth nothing because of the changes and they weren't properly backed. They weren't funded in a way that's beneficial to where New Earth is headed. And I am a believer in New Earth and I'm watching it happen around me. I wish that it 
could happen sooner for all of you. But to answer your question about your economic class, uh, your economic clash and fall rather, um, that uh, the worst of the worst has already happened. The, what you should be focused on now is trying to get out of debt because the real estate market is what's worse. Um, the dollar is actually going to be rising, not falling from here on out. And then it'll crash again in 2029. Again, I've told you a little bit about that um, and answering the prior question. And it will rise again um, there in uh, the midway through 2030. So you only have a short amount of time when it crashes. It falls again in 2040 and then rises again by 2042. Um, there are some variables along the way, but the dollar is still the dollar. You will still have cash. It's not going to go away and be replaced by um, a world digital currency or a system where you are not allowed to have your currencies. You will still have your currencies in most places in the world. Even in my time frame, you still use currencies. So for those of you um, who are wanting it to crash and die, I'm sorry to say you did not get your wish. Um, and I'm happy for the rest of us that we did get our wish and we are settled and doing well. And most people in the world are doing well. We have less poverty, less homelessness, less famine. Um, and that's in first world countries and third world countries. And you're more than welcome to um, ask me questions about how that happened. But the U.S. had to um, become less of a superpower. That's one of the first things that happened by 2050. Um but I digress. Getting back to your original question with this, yes, there are some crashes headed your way, but they're short. You are in a time where you have opportunity to invest wisely now, both in real estate of your own. Um, you should be flipping properties if you can. Um, you should be investing in rental properties if you can, because that um, gives you an opportunity. Rental prices are unfortunately too high. And this gives you an opportunity to change that for the collective and offer affordable housing for people who desperately need it right now. You'll notice there's a huge real estate crisis in the Western United States um, and not many people can afford to rent. It's been cheaper for them to buy. So if you can buy and if you can't prepare yourself and do everything that you can to own a home and own a property right now, now is the time to invest wisely um, and we'll discuss certain mutual funds, taxable and non-taxable, after these channeling that Pamela has written down insofar as notes from me uh, with what's going to be working. And I've already advised you for cryptocurrencies. Thank you so much, Clint. That leads into another question then yeah. from Bahia. She said, as a financial advisor, what would be your financial advice for us in 2023 do you see any particular industry worth investing in mm -hmm. or anything that's currently undervalued? The price of precious metals are going to rise exponentially by next year. So this is the year to get in. And I know that it's expensive, but this is something that would be worth in the long haul, would be really worth your time to invest in some precious metals. Cryptocurrencies are still volatile. So when it comes to financial advice for investing right now, I would stick to that, which has been tried and true with the exception of XRP and Cardano, which are on the rise and stick with your traditional Bitcoin and Ethereum and know that there will be a lot of crashes and then a lot of rising again and a lot of crashes and a lot of rising again. Um, there was a massive lawsuit that you're probably very familiar with, um, with Ripple. And I wanted to tell you, um, and uh, granted, this is all entertainment for Pamela. So ask your own financial advisor is what she would tell you. But I will tell you that Ripple is going to win that lawsuit with some interesting exceptions that they have to settle upon, two things that they can do and two things that they can't do. Um, but it makes it at least possible for all the other platforms to understand that they're not going to be as monitored as they think they're going to be. Excellent. Um, any particular metals in particular? Silver. Okay. Everyone has their eyes on gold. And I'd say think about some of the more rare metals and think about silver. Okay. Thank you for that, Clint. Um, Kyle has a question. What role does AI play in the year 2085? Hold on, I have to adjust. She needs to be doing yoga, Clint. That's what it is. <laughs> I, I can give her my yoga pants, he said. Absolutely. You go for it. <laughs> <sighs> I don't 
Here we focus again because I moved the body in 2023. Hold on. <sighs> He said, that's so weird when she does that. She just disappears into air. Wow. Now she's back again, reappeared. Okay, let me just call out the question again then. Uh, it was from Kyle and he wanted to know uh, what role does AI play in the year 2085? AI is in everything. Uh, many people have made a lot of mistakes with taking it too far. Um, perhaps this has been discussed in some of your other work, so Pamela doesn't likely want to repeat herself, but AI goes far by 2085. There's been some prominence in um, use of AI in medical technologies for surgeries. That's already happening. There's AI um, that can come in and help you with certain things with uh, medical treatments. Um, and this is because the healthcare systems collapse so much that doctors couldn't afford to run their clinics and operations in the same way that they currently do. And some of them are already seeing the beginning of that. So there are, um, there, there are, there were many nursing strikes in your time. That was one of the biggest things we remember in your history is the vast nursing strikes and your medical system shifted a lot to where nurses are finally being treated the way they deserve to be doctors and nurses are paid equally in our time frame. You'll never believe that, but there are unions now and doctors and nurses and all the staff members, it doesn't matter. You know, what you are, you get um, your unique cost of living is what most people in most career fields have access to. Um, and some people like the security of that because they get proper, uh, well, we have a, a new system for health insurance now. It's very different from the way yours is and much more equitable and affordable, mostly free, unless you're in a very high income bracket. Um, there are, I, I'd say about 60% of the United States is entrepreneurial in nature, uh, which is a first for a long time. Most people are self-employed. Most people work from homes and travel with their businesses and have many more freedoms. Um, it's the tax rates have uh, been up and down, you know, about self-employed business owners. That's been a struggle for decades to get self-employed business owners to um, have fair taxable rates. Um, but, it, but anyway, I regress and I'm kind of going off on a tangent here just to give you a big, broad example of what our world looks like right now. Um, AI is involved in medical care in, in so many ways, from staffing to um, surgeries. Um, most of your surgeries are AI operated in, in, in this year and have been for the past seven years. Um, AIs are involved when you went through this crash where you just couldn't get employees. And it's come to that point where since most people are self-employed, you want to go to a restaurant. We don't have that anymore. Most restaurants have people in the kitchen, but everything else is automated. You're going to be paying a robot. You're going to be having your, mm -hmm. your food served to you by a robot. And there are people that have to run certain things for kitchen standards that have to be human. But um, for the most part, you're, all of your service-oriented jobs are now um, operated by AI. So that's something you should know. Um, and then there were certain things that AI just did not work for, you know, in terms of cybersecurity, the plans there didn't work. That did not help at all and uh, made things less secure. Um, and then real humans couldn't get into their um, personal and business accounts. <laughs> um, so, so that became a big problem for multiple years as you wanted to not get hacked. So you asked for more technology, but you don't have people who actually want to work in your time frame. And this is a big problem. You want a lot, but you don't have people working for it. And this is one of the things that I wanted to talk to you about today that perhaps we can change because I'm very uncomfortable with the high presence of robotics in most uh, industries that are not self-employed. Wow. And it, it has um, an opportunity to, to be a problem. Uh, would you like to talk now about 
a little bit about that? Well, it's it's kind of an obvious thing. Yeah. Go get a job. <laughs> um, if you don't want to get a job, um, it's fine. Become self-employed. But um, we just need more humans in employable fields. And we need that. Um, people have become very entitled about how they will work and what they will do and what they don't want to do. That became a problem. Um, it's a lot less of a problem in my time frame than it is in yours. But these are things that you could shift so that we have less of an AI presence um, in, in small and large businesses. I mean, you have robots at your front desk greeting people at law firms. It's just not as human anymore. And I would like for you to change your future timeline. And maybe you would too. Yeah. It takes something away. When Service oriented industries. We need receptionists. We need secretaries. We need yeah. landscapers desperately. You want a robot cutting your grass? You know, you can't have that and then simultaneously be really afraid. Right now, there's a lot of people afraid of immigration in your country and immigrants coming in, and you want stricter laws but you're not willing to go cut your own grass. You're not willing to be service oriented. I'm not trying to, you know, uh, throw you down here and be insulting at all. I'm just trying to tell you that this, if you don't want to work, robots are going to need to replace you in those industries. And that's not going to be good um, for the world. Okay. Uh, we understand that. Yeah. Um, you spoke about healthcare changes. When did they actually start changing Clint in what year? Just approximately. Um, that with the AI for for healthcare, yeah, and people having yeah, you know, better healthcare, not as expensive and stuff like that. Well, the AI for healthcare isn't necessarily better, with the exception of the surgeries. Everything else just did not pan out well. What ended up happening in healthcare is that as it began to collapse, it became less of a capitalistic uh, endeavor. You know, most of your hospitals are. Um, based upon capitalism. And as capitalism began to shift, around 2045 was the biggest shift. And now you have, um, because doctors and nurses are paid equally, because everyone is treated equally, um, it, it's a field that uh, more people are becoming doctors than ever right now, so that we can have more human to human contact and less robotic contact. Um, more people can afford their education to be able to get a medical degree. Um, there are many changes that began um, to, to be instilled uh, starting in 2030s. And um, there were so many things. People, You couldn't even get people to go to universities and colleges anymore. By 2035, they were almost completely out of business uh, because of how unaffordable they were. So that had to shift. That had to be governmentally backed. Now hospitals are governmentally backed. And it's it has its trials and it has its tribulations. And what I can say about that is much like any healthcare system that is governmentally backed, you're going to wait longer unless you have a serious problem. And this is helpful and harmful. It's helpful because you can't afford right now um, to go get chemotherapy. You can't afford right now to get uh, the basic tests that you need and to just go to the doctor. Right. So that changes for you. But you will be waiting for those sort of, sort of general testing uh, situations unless things, something is seriously wrong. So that's sort of the trial part of it is how do we get past that, um, the waiting portion. Okay. Thank you for all that detail, uh, Clint. Um, we have another question here. Is New York City still the financial mecca of the world? God, no. No. And, and nothing is. I mean, we still have a White House. This is still the center of where the U.S. presidency runs. Um, I, I Something happened and they had to rebuild. I don't want to induce fear in this session with you, but something happened in 2060 and they had to rebuild. And it, it wasn't great. A lot of lives were lost. And then they had to rebuild and restructure the whole way. And people began to think, particularly after, after 2060, about how governments are ran in the United States, the United Kingdom, many first world countries began to um, follow the lead of the US, but no, um, we no longer are the Mecca for the world in finances. And I would uh, venture to debate that that we're, um, <laughs> that, that China is uh, definitely a lot more, uh, closer to that than we are. Okay, um, thank you for that. 
Um, another question, are we still purchasing and participating in stock mutual funds and bonds like we presently are in 2023 in the year 2085? You are, but they're, they're called something different. Okay. It's very different in this time frame and you do still have many things to invest in, um, but it's not ran the same way. You have a whole different system in, in this time frame to, to deal with, and it's easier. It's more equitable. Um, it's easier for anyone to know how to do it. You don't have to go pay thousands of dollars to someone like me to do it. <laughs> um, my, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a governmentally funded person. All, all of my businesses are funded by um, two different governments that work together in systems. So the U.S. and Canada Ireland and the UK in particular are working together um, in helping their their countries. Um, they're more of a bond. So we don't have the United Nations with so many countries pulled out of the United Nations by now. Um, and we only have these countries that are working together right now um, to help people financially and to kind of govern our systems. Okay. Thank you, Clint. Um, Bahia would like to know, what positive changes could we stand to make to improve our collective quality of life in 2085? What changes you can make now, I would tell you something that you don't want to hear. Some of you really don't want to do this. Own your own home, grow your own food, do what you need to do. This isn't just advice for the wealthy. Um, land, uh, many of you get really caught up in where you think you should live. If you can't afford renting and, and buying a home where you currently are, take yourself and your family to another part of the world where you can buy land, build cheaply upon it. I don't care if you put a tent or a trailer on it, just own it flat out. That is the best thing that you can do for yourself um, in pre preparation for my time and to make positive changes. If everyone owned their property and grew their own food, we wouldn't have a health crisis. We wouldn't have had the housing crisis that you currently are in that's about to get worse. It's um, If you start now with these two things, um, this is, I don't care if you only own a quarter of an acre somewhere, just anywhere, do what you can, have land ownership, invest wisely. We'll talk about that a little bit more. We've discussed cryptocurrencies and we can discuss some um, some taxable and non-taxable uh, ways to use mutual funds that are beneficial for the collapse that you're about to go through. Um, we can discuss all, all of that um, when, when Pamela gets done with our talk. She wrote it all down for you. Okay. Um, another question. Hi, Clint. Do you have any information to share regarding the housing market and the housing crisis some Western countries are facing in 2023 and do you recommend to buy or sell at this particular time? I think you may have covered a lot of that. Yeah, it is. Buyers tend to be waiting on things to get better in your time frame. Sellers, you got it made right now. You already know it's your market. But unfortunately for buyers, um, the interest rates are still high. They're not dropping anytime soon. This is the new low, unfortunately, for your time frame. So what you need to do is just go ahead and buy now or prepare to buy as soon as you can. Um, so that we don't have, you know, them rising even further. So they may rise even further as we continue to head towards the financial collapse coming your way in 2029 and 2030. So until then, you may notice some, a little bit of rising more, a little bit of rising more, and then leveling out and staying the same. And that's pretty much the status quo from now until 2029 um, with, with uh, interest rates on with your, with your lenders. But I, I need you to not wait on it to get better. You need to become responsible for yourselves, become responsible citizens of this beautiful world and of this earth. Um, those are some of the things you can do uh, with the housing crisis. But if you want a better future, you do need to, everyone needs to recycle. Everyone needs to learn how to replenish soil. Um, you know, it doesn't, the, the way that you manage agriculture right now, that doesn't exist in my time. There are no farmers out there with their tillers destroying the earth. That doesn't happen because we had so many natural disasters as a result and crop didn't yield by continuing to do the same thing and then wanting something different in your yield. 
it's not going to work. It's not working. And if you want an earth and not a dry dust bowl, um, it might be time to start considering deep methods of permaculture now. And uh, so there's many things that we can be doing other than being worrying about the real estate market, get a land and put a tent on it, do what you need to do. Um, you know, I'm, you're going to say, yeah, Clint, you're advising me to become a hippie. I, I don't care what it is. Um, the land is valuable. Uh, so someone who has land with um, soil that isn't a dust bowl is going to be very valuable, not to mention could save your life with the disasters coming up on your planet. Wow. Thank you for that advice, Clint. Um, Alana would like to know, what advice do you have for self-employed artists? You are in a beautiful era. Um, you can thank the beginnings of COVID for that. <laughs> um, I do need to advise you, you have another pandemic along on the way. It's not COVID. It's not even, it's, it's a, a fungus. It's not even a virus. It's a fungus. So this is something that um, you need to be aware of. Um, so, so you need to be self-supported. So don't be running to record labels, musicians. Those don't even exist in my time anymore. There are only two major record levels and they don't really take people because most, um, most artists are well aware of how to financially support themselves and how to grow themselves as an artist. Most artists are very self-grown, <laughs> um, but, but it takes a little bit more of an online presence it takes a little bit more of um, building on social media, doing more lives, getting to know people who listen to your music. Um, you, you're going to have to really work a little harder in that way of doing more gigs. Um, we still have tons of, you know, artists who do concerts. And these are artists um, who began to get loans from their governments for different types of genres of music because it was fascinating that we have four new genres of music now. Um, and that all came from your grandchildren, children of your time, you know? Tell us about the new genres. But... Well, country became more like rap. <laughs> um, some of you are just going to go, there's no way, you know, on God's green earth that that would happen. Country became more like rap. Rap became um, more like EDM. Um, EDM became more like opera. <laughs> um, opera. Opera became more like Broadway musicals. Um, there's so many shifts. There's genres now that your children and your great-grandchildren are just going to be brilliant artists. I mean, you can, when you hear stuff and you go, what is that? That doesn't even sound like music. Remember, your grandparents said that too <laughs> about your music. So keep that in mind. <laughs> <laughs> and one day you'll it'll grow on you and you'll understand how beautiful all types of music are. Um, I know that, again, many artists are uh, more personally present, both online and offline. And a lot more gigs happen, a lot more traveling happen, a lot more self-funded shows. We have uh, more musical programs in, in basic state and community and private universities that are funding musicians who want to be more um, self-backed. Okay, thank you very much for that, Clint. Um, a question from Leah. She said uh, she would like to hear about uh, lifespans in general in your time and what, what's considered middle age or what time do people retire at, that kind of thing. Mm. Um, you're in a tough time for that. Like no one retires in your decade. It's a very, it's a struggle to just even get through and to know that you're going to be okay in your time frame. That does need to change. You need more self-employment because when you are self-employed, you get to work at your own pace without burning yourself out. And if you want more money, you work harder. Mm -hmm. The work harder aspect um, tends to want to be replaced by AI algorithm and chatbot to want to work smarter. And then people learn to distinguish the difference in the lack of human to human contact with chatbot and the way that it grows. Um, and then people got tired of that. That was a new thing, particularly in 2030 to 2035, all the businesses were run by chatbot and people were saying, I just want a human to market to me. I would just want a human um, to be there for me. And um, there was lack of, um, human contact um, in the arts, particularly in the psychic arts, in coaching industries. 
that shifted um, and and then people wanted more one-on-one human contact, smaller group workshops, smaller uh, events, things like that, more of, of the, the one-on-one, just more humanization. <laughs> um, so then chat, uh, chat bots went out of business. And these are some of the things that happened. I probably got way off track with your it's okay, okay. No, question. No. Um, as, as kind of a follow-up question that Julie has to that would be, are people able to use their 401ks that they have now when they retire in the future? You're not going to like that. Um, not really. Not really. There's some degree of usage in them, but most people pulled out early because they could see um, that they weren't going to have access to it. So many people pulled out early and quite frankly, they probably shouldn't have. It probably would have been, um, uh, more tenable had it had so many people not pulled out early. Okay. I will tell you something that's changed this interesting. Profit sharing is something that if you are employed by someone, it is a legal requirement for your boss to give you profit sharing, not just to tell you about it and to send you to a little employee education class, but to give you equal profit sharing, no matter uh, who you are in your company, everything is equal. And this is one of the things why we don't, uh, it's everyone wanted equal profit sharing, but it has its losses as well. Well, wow, that's interesting. Um, thank you for that answer, Clint. Um, another question is, what can we do in 2023 to help our children become creative and entrepreneurial minded? Well, you know, I'm, I'm not a dad. I'm not a parent. I'm a single Wall Street guy just making a really good living and then helping tons of people in the process. I make a good living because I'm good at it, right? Not because I'm selfish. I want to advise people not to be so selfish because that's what you're putting out there to your kids is invest in this, invest in that. Nothing wrong with that, but are they seeing how you share? Uh, are they seeing you help the homeless? Are they seeing you at a local soup kitchen? Are they seeing you take some of your profit and share it with a third world country? Are they seeing you create your own nonprofit perhaps? Um, Nonprofits became really unscrupulous, particularly in the U.S., Ireland, the U.K., Canada, um, 2023 through 2030. There was a lot of bad activity going on. Um, but now there are laws that govern nonprofit organizations um, that help third world countries. So now you're protected. And from 2040 on, you'll be very protected in that. And that was because many of you just wanted to give to your local homeless folk. Many of you wanted to start organizations where local folk, you know, just normal, regular local folk with not a lot of money, but when you put just $10 a month together, you, you're making a great example to help your ch children think outside of the box. Um, if you want your children to become more creative, though, when you would think about that kind of parenting, but you're raising them in a way that's really non-creative, fear-based, and survival-oriented. So make sure that you understand that and don't push them, but just direct them towards the arts, direct them towards the music and see if they take an interest. That's something. I'm not a parent, so I can't really fully answer this question, but if you want them to be more entrepreneurial in mindset, why aren't you entrepreneurial in mindset? If you want them to become a musician, would you like to take a class and learn an instrument? These are this is just parenting 101 from a guy who isn't a parent. So please don't, you know, slack me off on this, but yeah, whatever it is. <laughs> Thank you very much, Clint. Um Gina says young families are presently struggling to survive at a basic level. Um, and she's hoping the economy will be much more favorable. Uh, for all to live a more quality life. Yeah. And she just wonders, could you share how humans are faring in your time overall? Well, I have some good news for you. Mm -hmm. Starting at around 2050, so many of you have made so many changes that you have a very equitable like, way of living. It's very harmonious. There isn't a lot of war. Um, we mostly, the food in my time, um, starting around 2050, most people, um, 
rely upon local co-ops for their food or they grow their own food if they're elderly and can't grow it they get it from the local car co-ops and just from even in New York City you have a two local co-ops growing right there in the middle of the city you'll never believe me uh, you started that project in 2055 so you have some good times coming up for your children and grandchildren and you just have to raise them in a way to let them be the pioneers of this okay I hope that that attended to your question because I've already forgotten it. No, it's it's perfect. <laughs> Thank you very much, Clint. Um, Maria has a question. She said, in a previous discussion of our future timelines in 2030, the hu future human told us about Seoris that it would reach pandemic levels. That did, yes. And that's what she's asking. At, at this point, was there a method of eradication implemented or oh, yeah. a way to reduce it? Yeah, you're and never going to believe it. Would you like to tell us something about it? You're never going to believe this, he wash said like that. <laughs> well, yeah, obviously, wash your hands. You know, um, some parents were pulling their kids out of daycares and things like that because of it, unfortunately. So I don't advise that, and you know, but I do. Mm. You're, you're never going to believe this. <laughs> you can was... thank good old President Trump, the hydrochloroquine. <laughs> That is what killed it. He was just a pandemic <laughs> and early. It, he was just, he knew it, but it, it's, uh, people didn't listen to him yeah. on that. And, and they, um, there were two things that uh, killed. Um, we've been through two pandemics since your time. The first one was the Cioris and it was the hydrochloroquine and it's various derivatives in pharmacology that killed it. Good old bleach. People don't drink it, but just put, your, put it on your counters and, you know, um, don't don't follow his advice on it, but it will come out that they create a project a product that is um, available for all. Okay, that's good. Um, and that would be really good. And the second pandemic that happened after that was more viral again, and it was um, oh, what did you guys used to call it? It's called something else, but. In your time frame, it's only available for veterinary use right now, and you can get it maybe at, you know, tractor supplies and things, what Invert in Invertin or something like that. That's what it used to be called. Okay. Um, you know, it's called something different now, but um, that was something that helped in the pandemic after the fungal one. And when did this one after the fungal one happen? Uh, I can't... Um, it happened in 2041. 41. Okay. Okay. Uh, thank you for all that detail. <laughs> um, another question here, how many people are living on Earth in 2085? Um, there are approximately 7.2 billion people. Okay. So we did not overpopulate or underpopulate. We have a decent amount, not too small, not too big. Okay. Um, and does the Roman Catholic Church exist in your time? You're never going to believe me, but they do not. <laughs> Did you just say yes? He said, um, he said, um, it's not so much that they're completely eradicated. Some of you know that that likely will never happen, but the Vatican is now a museum where everyone has access to wow. all the things that you never thought you'd have access to. And all the libraries. And yeah. All the things that they don't let people see because we wow. have so much religious equality now. So Catholicism is called something else and it, it exists, but in a different way. So we don't have um, one big pope that um, rules everything. We don't have that same premise anymore. We just have, um, much like any other religion, it's um, similar to Episcopalian. Uh, I would say it would be a cross between Episcopalian and um, something New Age or meditation oriented. Wow. And That's... a little bit of Lutheran, um, like in terms of the... Uh, the text and some of the things that you would study in your liturgy. Uh, so that's something that exists, but it's not called Catholic. Uh, that's pretty incredible about the Vatican. Thank you very much for sharing that with us. Um, another question here is homelessness and physical and mental disabilities are rampant in this time frame. Yeah. And society provides next to nothing, uh, they're saying, for their basic survival when citizens are unable to participate in general uh, and generating an income and she's wondering are there uh um options for these those who cannot work to have basic kind of an income and stuff in your time how is all that dealt with how do people cope 
Um, we do have programs for homeless, but because we have such good programs for everyone, we don't tend to have homeless people um, who don't have access. We have a lot of homeless people by choice. Okay. And we have um, retreat centers. We call them homeless retreat centers. And it's different from what you would know as a retreat center in your time. So these are lands that are specifically for the homeless to utilize and build their small communities. So you have tents, very fancy tents with, with the, you know, that are, um, I don't know how to say this because you don't have anything like this now, but tents that are equipped with electricity. <laughs> uh, I guess you would call that similar to clamping is what you would do, okay. except it's even better than that. Um, we have tiny homes. We have tiny home homeless communities, and we don't call them homeless because they have homes and they get grants from our governments. And this is a big thing all around the world with the exception of Asia. Um, but this is a big thing that we have these communities uh, of people who want to build tiny homes or to do the glamping thing. We don't call it that anymore, like you used to call it that. Um, and it's fully governmentally sponsored. So you're not paying for those utilities that you're sourcing. And um, you have certain, you have rules. The rules are no violence. Um, you have certain things. If you have drug addictions, you have immediate access But that to, to help. But that access is pushed upon you. That's sort of the hard thing about taking a governmental grant for a certain program is that if you have an addiction, you're forced to um, to go into rehab and to free yourself of that addiction. You don't have that choice. If you want to stay in the homeless retreat centers, you don't have a choice of exposing other people to um, being out of control with addictions. Okay. So that's, it's safe, but kind of forceful. And I do want that part of it to change a little bit. Granted, I'm also happy that um, more people get access to the proper care that they need mentally and physically. Um, and we don't call people homeless anymore because most people are choosing. Uh, it's more of a lifestyle. It's, it reminds me a little bit of the 60s when, when the hippies go or traveling around in vans and things like that. It's just kind of a return of that sort of culture. <laughs> That's cool. Um, are you okay for a few more questions, uh, Clint? Yes. Okay. Um, Philip wanted to know, will plasma energy play a significant part in the future? Yes, particularly in uh, modes of transport. And there's a new type of train that's primarily um, electric and plasma in, in its engine. It's oriented with plasma and electric. And then there are cars that have been around for the past 20 years that are uh, plasma cars, that plasma and electric. Perfect. Thank you very much for that. Uh, another question, is oil and gas still a dominant fuel or Not have we other energy sources? No, no, we have other energy sources um, and there are certain worldwide regulations that are placed upon oil. So those of you who are in the oil industry now, this is your heyday um, because we don't have anything to replace it now, but we will. And then there will be certain regulations on actually how much oil we can take from this planet, okay. which is helpful uh, for the planet, not harmful. And it uh, balances things out rather well in terms of uh, equality for humanity. Okay, thank you for that. Um, another question from Ben is, are there any ETs openly on the earth in your time? Yes. Oh, that's so cool. Tell us more. <laughs> um, there were a lot of disclosures um, that happened um, beginning in 2029, 2030, and 2031. Until then, it was just like, oh, yes, we finally agree that there are ETs and the Pentagon says so. You guys remember all that. Now it's like not only can you not deny them, but they are in your skies and they are landing and you, they are getting out and meeting people. And um, and you can't say that didn't happen and the government can't come up and try to give you some shush money or threaten you. Right. Um, none of those things happen anymore because we've had so many individual encounters and they can't just say that it was psychical, like physical, true encounters and disclosures beginning in 2029, 2030 and 2031. Um, there was one that hovered right over the, the White House for quite some time. And that was a big, bold move. They were thinking about shooting it down. <laughs> Um, interesting things have happened in that time frame, 2029, 2030, and 2031. Um, and, and there was just, they were offering gifts to different systems um, and different talented people, different scientists and environmental scientists and people who are running um, self-funded groups 
um, and weren't backed by the government, but scientists who just wanted to save Earth and prevent climate, um, poor climate situations, ETs would come down and offer these scientists unique gifts uh, to help them and unique technologies to help them. Um, and those scientists began to give humans these technologies. Um, and it, it was incredible. These are things you're never going to believe. <laughs> you're not going to believe me, he says. Oh, that's so cool. Thank you for all that information. Please. Granted, who believed that anyone was going to have an internet like a year, <laughs> a year before it happened? No one, everyone said it was, yeah, sure. But uh, that is what happened. Oh, that's really cool. Um, Maria would like to know, are healers and light workers careers more mainstream in 2085? Uh, very much. And along with it, a lot of charlatans. <laughs> Along with it, a lot of people taking advantage of just regular folk and charging so much money um, to the extent where, you know, now people charge great amount of money if you want to go to a healing. But a healer will also say, you know what, um, here here is a free resource or here's a resource that's affordable. Um, so it's a lot more accessibility, but a lot of charlatans as well. So okay. it's like that you wanted it to be more mainstream. And now that it is mainstream, everyone goes, yeah, now everybody's at, how do I know if you're the real thing? You're already experiencing some of that since COVID. Everyone wanted to be a psychic and a healer since COVID. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. um, Teresa would also like to know, have we managed to cure any diseases like cancer or Parkinson's or Alzheimer's? Yes. You have had some major cures. Um, well, with diabetes, I'd say you've had some interesting prevention and some unique drugs that helped both with weight loss and with blood sugar control. Um, you've had not a cure, but a preventative measure that is different than just eat right. <laughs> um, you've had some interesting technologies occur in cardiology that could um, help with these genetic conditions like Tetralogy of Fallot. Um, that's going to be coming out in 2030. You'll have um, some unique technologies that are less invasive for babies and children and adults who are experiencing um, really terrible symptoms from that unique genetic heart condition. Um, we have a cure for chronic myeloid leukemia and a preventative measure um, when a person, that there's a type of test that a person can take if they're exhibiting signs or they think they might have acute myeloid leukemia, they can take a test um, that, that catches that quicker and prevents AML. Um, so we have made a lot of shifts in um, pharmacology, natural pharmacology more than allopathic pharmacology, but we have a lot more um, we, we don't have a similar, like you have an FDA now that will say, don't take this, or this isn't licensed. Now, many doctors are using, um, herbal and homeopathic methods in their, um, regular treatment protocol for certain cancers. And that is approved by, uh, it isn't the FDA, it's called something different now. Okay. Thank you for that, Clint. Uh, I just have a few more questions. Are you okay for another few? Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, another question here, is it easy to travel internationally? Yes. It's is just we have different types of planes. Okay. What are the different types of planes? Um, well, right now, you know, you have the Boeing 787 and yeah. some of the small to bigger, larger planes. And we have a plane that's about twice the size of the Boeing 787. Wow. And yeah. travel is okay from the point of view of the pole shifts and stuff like that? We don't have, um, I need to start to, in order to answer your question, I need to start with the fact that we don't have any planes that are gasoline operated anymore. Wow. So all the electrical and plasma technology planes um, came in just right shortly after the cars did, they started working on a different type of engine for planes and trains um, as well. So that was really helpful because what happened was we had all these electric cars and hybrid cars. And then when the poles began to shift, it would blow their engine. The engine would just die because the geomagnetic um, uh, energies of the earth would just knock their car flat out. <laughs> uh, so that didn't bode well for Tesla and some of their current, you know, electric only engines and some of the hybrid engines could just go straight to gas. So you have some backup there. Um, in terms of different reserve engines and things. But now 
you you started out with a plasma reserve engine and you tested that that went well that began to become integrated and then you decided to make most of your cars uh, plasma primarily and then electric as a reserve wow that's pretty cool um another question is how are the bees doing in your timeline they made a good recovery finally it took a lot of effort but they made a good recovery. They didn't begin to recover until 2045. Okay, wow. That's cool that they're doing well. Um, thank you for that. Uh, another question, how have people sp evolved spiritually? What is the typical home life uh, dynamic like? Mm. You know, how do we interact and live? And that's from Mary. It's very similar, except that you're closer to your neighbors. You live in what we call pods. I know that's an interesting thing versus subdivisions with home HOAs. We don't have what you have now, uh, but we have pods. And everyone who wants to be a part of making sure that their unique pod in neighborhoods is safe and, and things of that nature, they will come and vote together. Um, they, they all chip in uh, as opposed to having an HOA fee. Uh, everyone chips in who can, and then, you know, if no, not enough people chipped in, then you don't may maybe have certain things that you would typically have. You don't have a nicer neighborhood if, if not enough people can chip in, and that's all up to you now um, versus having an HOA to blame or to feel like someone can shame you or tell you what to do. It's like, if you want this, you will work for it, and everyone works together in their pods. Most people work from home. Uh, we began um, an exchange of service platform in most pods, particularly in the UK, um, in Ireland and in Canada and in the, the US. The pod system has started so that people uh, who say you're traveling, someone in your pod will be responsible for watching your home, feeding your animals, uh -huh. taking care of your garden. And when they're traveling, you have no choice but to stop working and go do the same for them. And it's based upon a lottery system. So if you're up, you're up, just like jury duty, man. <laughs> um, this is kind of, I know, I know you want your freedoms, but you can't have your freedoms in the world without actually working hard and working together. And these are the, some of the things that kept us free from so much AI influence. And we started to just work for each other. And um, when restaurants came out and most of the employees were AI, we just went, yeah, okay. And then I guess we're cooking our own food. And those things began to collapse. So we're having restaurants around the world collapse now and people are starting to make restaurants and employ people, not robots, but employ actual people. Oh, cool. And if you want these changes, this, this means you have to really think about it. Like who is, who, who in my family would be best at running a restaurant? Who in my family would be best at becoming a landscaper? Who in my family would be an excellent trash collector? Who in my family um, would be best on a city council, etc. And these are things that people begin to think about as opposed to just being like, no, 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 uh, my children are going to become a doctor or a lawyer. And because um, in today's society, many people are paid equally unless you're an entrepreneur. If you're an entrepreneur, you get to make what money you want, but you have some interesting requirements to give back. You, you Capitalism isn't a thing in our world anymore. Okay. Thank you for that. Um, I have a question for you, and that's what do you do for fun, Clint? What do you like to do in your spare time? Well, you saw the tie-dyed shirt. I like yoga. And I, like, <laughs> I like teaching um, some ancient Buddhist practices. I'm a oh, fan of Tonglen, much like Pamela. I'm a fan of teaching people radical compassion. That's very really cool. And I, um, I'm a Rinpoche person. <laughs> He's no longer with us, as you know. Um, but I'm um, a Rinpoche devotee and follower, but I don't really have one God that I worship. I'm just a normal Buddhist with a normal job, a normal life. I don't go to an ashram or monastery somewhere. Um, and not many people do anymore. Uh, many people are starting to understand that spirituality needs to be a part of their everyday waking life. It's really common that most people get up and do something to connect themselves to nature and to connect themselves to source. Um, and you don't have so many religions saying, be like this, be like that. And then you don't have many people who would call themselves spiritual saying that religious people need to become more spiritual. You just have people um, really respecting each other's rites of passage in uh, what you call ascension. We don't really call it that anymore. <laughs> Um, thank you so much for all the, the answers that you gave us today, Clint. Uh, it's been nice talking to you. Okay. Thank you very much.
All right. Tell Pamela she needs that tie-dye t-shirt. <laughs> I'll get her one. I'll wake up and make her read what we, um, yeah. I'll have her read what I wrote down for about the mutual funds. That would be great. So. Thank you so much. All right. Sewn out. Winter twenty twenty All right, so I'm supposed to read something. Right, where did he write that? Okay, he said, this is what we talked to him in, about last night when I was connecting with him again in remote viewing. Um, he said that it, regarding your portfolios, you need to become positioned to earn more income while taking less risk, as you know, but to retain the capacity to add value through active relative value trading. Um, he said, there are a couple of things that I wanted to go over to talk to you. Tax exempt accrual will play a key role in total return in 2023, 2024, and 2025. Um, he said income has regained its prominence in mutual bond total return. So now mutual bond mu municipal investors can now realize much higher income accruals due to 2022 sharp rise in rates. So top income tax bracket investors, and especially those living in high income tax states, should find the higher tax exempt income levels attractive on a taxable equivalent basis versus other asset classes. Raising accrual rates tend to reward investors who reinvest their dividends through the compounding effect of buying more shares at relatively lower average prices. And I believe higher income levels can also better stabilize returns compared to the last several years when low coupons and yields offered little cushion against price declines. Additionally, I believe right now investors who remained in passive strategies have missed this opportunity while hoping that the market would recover. And this is similar to what I will be talking about in real estate. Oh, he did talk about that. I think I remember. Okay. In this remote viewing today, raising accrual rates required actively replacing low book yield positions with much lower price, higher yielding bonds, um, tr bond trades typically known as tax swaps. We believe investors can benefit from current market accrual rates in 2023 all the way until 2029. Here is the second theme. Overweight general obligation and essential service bonds. I believe essential investment grade sectors such as general obligation bonds and water and sewer bonds will regain favor with investors this year all the way until 2027. I expect greater demand for traditional municipal bonds, such as bonds backed by the taxing power of general obligation issuers or secured by the revenues of essential service providers like public water and sewer authorities. I anticipate continued investor uncertainty over the path of inflation, the Federal Reserve's policy decisions, and the potential for a recession in 2029 will be the reason why investors find comfort in the core municipal sector. In addition, investors should favor shifting to higher quality sectors that now pay higher accrual rates. We believe that core sectors of the municipal market outperform in 2023 through 2026. Here is the third theme. In a bifurcated high yield municipal market, liquidity drives performance. I believe a disciplined pursuit of liquidity will be rewarded in 2023 high yield municipal market all the way until 2027. Back in 2022, the massive wave of high yield fund redemptions resulted in an equally sized sell off of bonds as funds sought liquidity. 
High yield municipal funds primarily sold their widely held and better quality positions to meet those redemptions resulting in those more liquid bonds underperforming relative to holdings that did not trade throughout the year. In anticipation of a healthier market for you this year in 2023, I believe those underperforming bonds now provide the opportunity to outperform as investment discipline reemerges. In my opinion, discipline in the high yield municipal market goes beyond credit research to include an understanding of liquidity, tradability, and the investor base. I expect inflows will return to a high yield municipal market and issuance will be light. And as a result, I believe the more liquid part of the high yield municipal market outperforms in 2023 through 2027. Here's the fourth theme for investing. Fund flows drive recovery in long municipal bond prices. I believe explo- exposure to longer term bonds bonds drives return in 2023 through 2027. Municipal mutual funds and exchange traded funds are the natural buyer of the long end of the municipal curve. I expect a return to positive mutual fund flows would result in the outperformance of longer term bonds. Additionally, mutual funds will likely seek to increase their distribution yields, causing them to extend the maturity and duration profile of purchases. And as a result, bond structures with longer durations and discount prices enhance return potential relative to shorter duration premium structures. And finally, the municipal to treasury yield ratio curve remains steep, indicating that the longer end of the municipal market offers better value opportunities. Longer municipal, longer municipal bonds with ratios in the mid-90s range are cheap on a relative basis. I believe that portfolios with exposure to longer maturities will outperform from 2023 to 2027. Theme number five for investing. I need you to think outside the box, my friends. Using short taxable municipals to enhance after-tax performance is on the rise between 2023 and 2027. I believe shorter-term taxable municipal bonds provide better after-tax value than comparable maturity tax-exempt bonds. Investing in shorter-term municipal bonds, a tactic used to add liquidity and or manage duration in a portfolio, becomes more difficult when the bonds are overpriced. Shorter-term tax-exempt bonds have risen in price beyond fair value primarily due to passive investor demand. In 2023 to 2027, I expect that demand for shorter-term tax-exempt bonds will continue unabated, and you don't expect that new issuance sufficiently offsets that demand. And as a result, I believe shorter-term tax-free municipal to treasury yield ratios remain rich throughout the year. Comparable maturity taxable municipal yields, however, offer better value on after-tax basis. And the taxable municipal market's continuing expansion in both size and breadth has brought a new dimension to revive value trading in the the municipal market. I believe that investors should favor shorter term taxable municipal bonds because they provide competitive after-tax yields, attractive spreads to treasuries, and the same high credit quality of the tax-exempt municipal asset class. So that is the information that we pre-channeled in advance from him. And um, I appreciate all of you. Uh, Let's see what we have going on next week. I will put out another poll, if I haven't already, for who we're going to work with. And... That'll be for Wednesday. You'll see another channeling here for Wednesday. Um, Let's see what else is going on. There's something coming up Thursday that's important. We we have our spiritual bonfire on Tuesday at 9 a.m. What's on Thursday? Thursday. It's a class. I believe it's. Tier one to uh, six. Yeah. The dream walker. The dream walker. Yeah. So we're going to talk about the astral realm and the dreaming and how to access it for yourself. Uh, what it means. We're going to talk everything about walking in the astral realm and the dreaming on this Thursday at 9 a.m. on my Patreon channel. So that is linked above. Insofar as Ask Your Future Self readings, I do offer them to patrons only right now um, at this low introductory rate. So if you're a patron, please grab your discount and get a hold of that. Um, We're going to keep that introductory rate for patrons for quite some time in the future. 
um, just to help and as a thank you for all of your support. And insofar as making it public, that will be soon as well. We'll offer regular rates to the public coming up very soon. What do you say, June? I don't know when we decided on that. No, in, yeah. in a, within the week. Within the week. Within okay. the week, we put that in. But Soon, sooner than I thought. <laughs> but <laughs> patrons, we will be holding your discount for you. Yeah. Um, we'll yeah. hold that for a long time for you because you guys look after yeah. everything and support families. Well, and so more work to honor Divine Mother coming up this month on Patreon as well as we go deeper with Anagram Mother of Jesus. Um, and we have a class coming up that I haven't publicized as well on Zoom for the public about rites of passage for healers. So that's going to be really exciting. We're going to talk to Anna and the Essenes about how they really opened up to their healing abilities with different Essene-based um, rites of passage for initiation. That's yeah. going to be our public. Yeah, that'll be our public June event for everyone. It'll be going June. up today. And we'll probably, yeah, we'll put that up today. Yeah. That's it. Thank you. If you like this, please subscribe. Please subscribe. That really helps me a ton. I love that. And um, subscribe, turn on your notifications. Some people say you're not getting your notifications. So um, make sure that you have your notifications turned to all. And then go into your phone and make sure that in your settings that you have where it says what things are allowed to notify you, make sure that you have YouTube clicked. All right. I'll see you next week. Bye.